uh, the trip start and trip end hail next. Right away, you'll notice that the word sector has been removed. Uh, I um, ask you, Doug, to address that. Yeah, reason? The, the reason the trip start and end hail um, has been changed to remove the word sector is that even though Amendment 16 implemented trip start and end hail for dockside monitors um, for sectors in 2010 and 2011, ultimately under 16, common pool vessels would also be subject to dockside monitors in 2012 or 2013, depending on whether Framework 45 is approved or not. And um, there's also a proposed measure in Framework 45 that would require all vessels issued a ground fish permit fishing under a day at sea or on a sector trip to submit a trip end hail for each trip. So it would apply to a broader audience in 2011 if Framework 45 measures are approved. We'll find that out shortly, but this is the uh, means to ultimately a longer term uh, solution for this trip start and end hail. Even if Framework 45 measures are disapproved, under Amendment 16 measures that have been approved, common pool vessels will be subject to dockside monitoring in 2012 anyway. Thank you, Doug. Okay. Are there any questions for Doug? Okay. Okay, moving on. All right, we're looking at the trip start hail. Uh, a couple of changes were made for 2011. First, a minor change in the instruction at the top here. It says this report may be used by any ground fish vessel to satisfy the hail requirements for all ground fish trips. Previously, it said by any sector vessel. And we changed it to ground fish consistent with Doug's explanation. In the fields below that have to be filled out, you'll notice there is a new field, third one down, observer or ASM on board, ASM or at sea monitor. So the operator would uh, indicate yes or no, whether they have an observer or an at sea monitor on board. And Doug, do you want to address why that is? Yeah, this, this is a means to implement one of the proposed Framework 45 measures. Um, Framework 45, as you guys may know, the council decided to basically try to maximize the available funding for at sea and dockside monitors by um, exempting trips that do not have, uh, well, they basically said NIMS pay for as much at sea monitoring as you can and dockside monitoring try to achieve 100% of all those trips that are not already covered by an at sea monitor or observer. And so to facilitate the assignment of dockside monitors to particular trips, uh, this field was created as a means to identify whether or not you have an observer on your, on your uh, vessel for that trip. And that'll give the dockside monitoring service provider an idea whether or not they have to actually assign a dockside monitor for your trip. If, if the answer is yes, then uh, it's likely that your trip will not be encountered by a dockside monitor upon landing. If the answer is no, then there is definitely a chance that you will have a dockside monitor upon landing. Okay, thank you, Doug. Uh, the other thing to point out on the form is under the estimated offload field, there at the bottom of that uh, trip start hail, um, that field is an optional field in that uh, only, it's only to be filled in for trips that are less than six hours or fishing within six hours of the offload port. You might recall with the current version of the software, uh, they had to put something in there. That's not the case now. So I'll show you quickly filling out the form. The operator does have to click on the trip start hail button there first, then go to the vessel permit field, six digits, ETR number, up to up to 14, observer on board, yes or no, I'll put a Y, it's just a Y or an N. Landing state, uh, we'll say MA for Massachusetts, landing port city, Gloucester. Estimated arrival is two digit month, two digit day, two digit hour, two digit minute, local time. So month, let's say 03, 29, you notice it turns red until it gets all the information it's expecting in that field. So March 29th at, um, and this is a 24 hour clock, let's say 16.30 for a 4.30 arrival. You notice the send button comes up and we could send the form and you'll see what the form looks like 
when it's received by NIMPS and what it'll look like in their outbox on their VMS unit on the vessel. Or I can go in and add the estimated offload in the same format, March the 29th at oh, 1700, 30 minutes later in hit send. And now it'll fill in that last field in the comma uh, delimited format. Moving down to the trip end hail, again, we have to click on the trip end hail box. Same thing in the instructions. The report may be used by any ground fish vessel to facilitate monitoring of offloads. That's, uh, that's new. And in the fields, they, um, they're the same except for the dealer location, we've added the word offload. So it says dealer slant offload location. Doug, do you want to briefly explain that? Yeah, this, if you guys recall, this was actually brought up at the last sector VMS conference call we had some time ago. I think it was last spring. Unfortunately, this is the first opportunity we had to really integrate these changes into the groundfish VMS changes. So this does respond to one of the comments we got from sector managers at the time saying that dealer location was not as specific and that some vessels were offloading at a non-dealer location such as uh, a convenient wharf or some other docking procedure that uh, was not directly at the dealer. So this is more accurately reflects how the fishery is operating and hopefully addresses your concerns. Okay, thank you, Doug. And uh, again, there are some optional fields. So you'll notice down here under second offload state, second offload port city. Uh, with the uh, current software, you had to put something in there, like for second offload, say NA. Uh, that's been fixed in the new software. So you do not have to put anything in those two fields if you don't have a second offload to conduct. So very briefly, I'll fill in this form to show you. Permit number, it's just obviously dummy data. Landing state, Massachusetts, landing port city, Gloucester, dealer offload location. Um, I'll abbreviate, let's say, uh, Lost to Seafood Display Auction, GSDA. And uh, let's see, I'm, I have to, let me take a, give me one moment, folks, and we we'll take a look and see if we can actually put numbers in there. We have given specific information to the uh, programmers about this. <clears throat> and let's see, I need to see, okay. Dealer offload can take both alpha and numeric characters, so I guess I could have just tried it. So you can enter numbers if there is some sort of a, a numbering scheme for the address of the offload location, you can do that too, okay? Estimated arrival, again, 24 hour clock, 03, 29, 1800, 6 p.m. and uh, 03, 29, estimated offload, 18, 15, let's say, no second offload state, no second offload port city, total ground fish kept, let's say 3,000, total non ground fish, 500, you see the send button came up. So you don't have to fill out those two uh, fields that you had to fill out before. Are there any questions about the uh, trip start or trip end hails? Okay, moving on. 